All right. Well, what is this? USB cable. Let me put it aside. All right. Okay, so uh, no questions, I presume. Everybody's quiet. Everybody's okay, hopefully. Everybody okay? Whole five of you? <laughs> we have very few people in class today, so. Can I, can I change my answer? <laughs> What happened, Thomas? I lied. I lied. <laughs> you lied. <laughs> Anyways, I like a beautiful lie. Let it be. All right. So, um, uh, let's talk about uh, constructors. And I'm going to um, uh, constructors, extractors, and things that we talked about. Um, um, let me just uh, open up name over here. As we had, we created name with all the constructors and destructors in it. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to add the, de uh, the destructors to uh, the company employee thingy that we created and also use name in there, kind of reuse our things that we have done kind of so it becomes a review. And then after that, we are going to kick into uh, operators. So uh, with employee, I do not. Oh, actually, yours, your employees are completely different. One. You, ha you actually have. Uh, um, dynamic memory. Other classes, they don't have dynamic memory, so we didn't create any constructor and destructor for it, but we're going to do it for this one. So uh, for this one, uh, we're going to create a constructor for it, for the name, for the, for the employee with a name, display read higher. So uh, I'm going to create a, an employee, um, employee constructor over there. Um, I don't see that there is any uh, employee over here being initialized. We don't have any set employee, so I'm not going to write anything other than a default constructor. And I'm going to create a, um, a destructor for it. Make sure that it deallocates everything properly. For the employee, what I will do, let me just bring employee.cpp over here. So this is kind of a review on what we have done last time. So um, company.cpp I don't need. There you go. So let's create the employee uh, uh, default constructor, no argument constructor. In no argument constructor, I'm going to set M name uh, to null PTR. I'm going to set M salary. M salary to zero and M employee ID M employee ID I'm gonna set it to zero and it sets it to a safe empty state kind of a thing and for the destructor that will be very easy uh, for destructor I need to deallocate the name so that's what I'm going to do therefore I'm gonna write over here deallocate name so now the allocate name is being called. I'm just going to, because it's in the destructor, I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to make it private. Nobody needs to use it because the name deallocates, sorry, the name deallocates itself. The name deallocates itself automatically. So I'm going to take that over here and put it right over here. So that's my deallocation for the thing, for the for the name. Of course, now nothing's going to work because we use the allocate name in, in, in company. We're going to take care of all those. So constructor is created. It sets it up um, and makes employee blank. We have display read and we have hire and hopefully everything's um, uh, working properly over here. And um, the destructor for the uh, employee just simply calls it the allocate and wipes out the employee. So uh, let's save that one. Now I'm going to come back over here and go to uh, go to um, company.h. So company has open without and open with. So I need two constructors for this. I'm going to create a company as default and a company 
with constant character pointer name and that's going to open the 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 company and then we're going to have uh, a destructor that is going to uh, get rid of all the memory that the company has um, and also what I will do over here in employee uh, oh you know what happened everyone I just made a boo-boo I'm gonna retract on that one we want to reuse our name because we want to reuse our name this name is not going to be dynamic anymore so what I need to do over here is to completely remove this and remove the allocate name and remove this character thingy and add a name we created a name that encapsulated name I completely forgot about that one so I'm gonna write over here include name and now my employee has a name I don't need to have any constructor or destructor because name takes care of its own and other than that class employee has nothing to worry about so so these things are not needed um, and this is not needed the only thing I need to do over here is to modify my employee to use the name so in here um, I create a variable and do a get line and do all these stuff I do not need to do that all I need to do is to say i um, uh, sorry is to to uh, to print the value of name and simply say over here m name dot read and that's gonna read my name and in here I want to display the name let's take a look at name to see how what is the easiest way to to fix that uh, or oh, a name returns the the data pointer so it turns the value of the name out so I can just do that in here I'm simply gonna say dot get and as I see over here our employee over here sucks because it's a display that is const we don't want that and also a display is supposed to return O stream so I'm gonna fix that one too include IO stream so in here I'm gonna say STD O stream reference and the display is gonna receive uh, STD O stream reference OSTR set to STD C out so the standard way of doing uh, a display and this display has to be constant with the exact same uh, uh, signature so that's what I'm gonna do so now it looks better uh, now m name dot get in here oh I put a semicolon for some unknown reason I'm gonna remove that okay so um, why oh and this I have to remove okay and what is this one saying over here m name is not identified oh display belongs to sorry employee and we're good now okay and I think uh, yeah so that's it so that's the display of the employee now it's uh, uh, fixed and properly set did we have anything else over here we had to read to read STD I stream reference and STD I stream reference I S T R is STD C in and I'm gonna do the exact same thing for read over here so that's what a what's what read is going to be with nothing over here and it's gonna return a reference of that one and at the end I have to say return ISDR and in here I have to say return and this is actually OSDR and I should return it so return that one and in here everything so C out is C out I am not using read of name receives ISDR so I gotta pass that one to it um, the rest are good so that's my employee uh, employee let me just compile it control F7 update it to uh, a better version uh, and now that employee is using name and everything is good so uh, I'm not gonna test anything testing it with, is with you 
uh, I probably will screw something up over here needs debugging I'm gonna leave that to you okay so uh, first thing first over here I need this character name to be changed to uh, name itself so in here I'm gonna include name like the other one and in character name over here is gonna be name and uh, because it has a default construct it can be universe and uh, be defaulted with the universal initializer no problem with that uh, now so we are we okay down to here okay all right so so that's that now for the company to actually be dynamic what I need to do is uh, to create uh, the definition of these three things so first thing first I'm gonna take this open stuff that I have over here and I'm gonna put it in the private part we don't need it and uh, close down is something that should not be closed down by anyone that's gonna go over there so these are the ones that are gonna get called in the constructor and destructor and one by one let me create the definition for it so this is the create the definition for the company uh, uh, default constructor one argument constructor and the destructor now now let's go do it so uh, let me just bring it up right above this all right so constructor one argument constructor and here so uh, when the company gets open it just gets a name and opens the company and opening the company what does it do it receives it checks to see if name is null or not and then uh, mm, sets it um, all these things are done in name so I don't need to do any of these so I'm just gonna remove this and in here I simply am going to say enter company name and I'm gonna say name uh, M name dot read done so that's gonna open the company and set the name and in here it is actually setting the name of the company so again all I need to do is to say M name the set name voila so I don't need to do anything else the rest will be done properly so we are good with that um, the close down what does it do it it uh, it says one by one remove the employees and so delete name we don't need to do okay because uh, name is a class of its own and it deletes by itself and it takes care of its own we don't need to worry about it um, then uh, when I'm deleting the workers I am essentially deleting the employees and therefore the destructor of the employee will be called which is going to destroy everything inside the class including the attribute name and because name has a destructor it's gonna deallocate itself I do not need to, to do individual deletion for those anymore because every single name will get destroyed and when it gets destroyed it's gonna wipe its own stuff so I don't need to worry about it so uh, I'm just gonna say close down delete workers which is deleting the workers uh, which is the which are the uh, which are the uh, uh, workers over here which is fine and name is gonna get deleted by itself so everything you see when I when I brought in constructors and destructors things are getting easier now and made it getting more clear I don't have to go through all that hassle anymore so that's that so that's my open and close now in here if I uh, if I if my company gets created it should get open so I'm gonna go open the company and in here I'm gonna say open with name so as soon as the company gets created it's gonna open and it's gonna close it down over here so everything looks good so automatically it's gonna open the company the way you want it 
uh, close down will do it now let's see if hire is working properly it says hiring display name uh, and after that let me sorry let me put my uh, cell phone on silence so it doesn't make awful noises every three seconds there you go that's better okay uh, everything looks okay over here expand everything looks fine over here delete workers looks okay over here list employees this may you will see that this may crash this may not work and it's good if it doesn't work so I am changing it try to run it and 90 percent it's going to crash if it doesn't crash fine but if it crash don't crashes don't worry next lecture is going to fix uh, next week's lecture is going to fix that crash so bear with me okay so delete work is going to be deleted and then set it up whatever I'm not getting in here so in here just display name is uh, saying no name um, and I believe name already does that if in name you print something and it's not proper it's gonna say no name right so I don't need to worry about that all I need to do is to display the name so in here I have to say um, m name dot the display but of course company display sucks I have to fix that so display name um, over here um, I would put an OSDR for it and list employees the same thing I will put OSDR and do it that way but that's another story we'll do it later so uh, you kind of see what happens right now when I'm using the the uh, the the classes uh, compound types and constructors and destructors it be, it becomes simpler uh, uh, final implementation becomes simpler uh, how it becomes simpler when you create an object and the object becomes automatic then most of the stuff that you have to think about when you are creating a, um, when you are expanding your development you don't need to worry about it anymore if you design your class properly because it's an object and it's a self-sufficient object it is going to take care of its own business and you just use it as a separate entity that is fully automatic and completely self-control uh, are we okay down to this point all right uh harshil hello hello yeah, I guess um, in employee.h, you forget to write the logic for uh, uh, setting to the empty state to the other variables. Yeah, m salary and m employee ID. There is no function. It says to set it, to set it to empty. Maybe it's yeah. not needed. I don't know. But if we call that display without initializing. So them, let's see what happens. If we call display, let's see what happens, what the display of employee does. If that's the case, you're responsible to fix it. <laughs> okay, so uh, we have a hire and we have a read and we have a display. So display does m get name get and that's gonna crash because it's gonna be null. You're absolutely right. So yes, no safe empty thingy is set in here for displaying the name for display and for displaying the employee as well as the employee ID and salary as well yeah because same no... thing yeah there it is absolutely you're absolutely right so it is actually better to write name like that and do something like this m name dot display OSDR and then continue the display like that so that actually sh shows no name and uh, yeah, you can. Yeah. Anyways, do it. I know what you're saying. That's perfectly good. There, in no way, what the code that I have written is a complete and good and beautiful code. As I told you, employees that that I create, I'm gonna develop it as I'm going forward in 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 lectures. So this is not the perfect thing, Harshil. Thank you for mentioning it. It would be Thank nice you. if we do something like this. Now we're not gonna have 
at least when we are showing it's gonna say no name and puts zero for everything so that's saves her shells problem is that okay Herschel? now yeah thank okay. you so no problem but this one it's still not doing any safe empty state for us uh, like for example in here in name do we have uh, we have set empty but do we have an is empty we don't have an is empty in name if we had an is empty in name our shield since you asked if we had a function over here called boolean is empty something like that for the name and let's actually develop it so if I have something like this and set empty sets m value and title to null title could be null but m value can never be null so I can come to set m is empty and say the object is empty if m value is null are we good with this Harshil? Mm, yeah so now name can tell what is it going on in here m is undefined let me save it m is undefined identifier m is undefined okay is it going bananas uh let me just see name no it's good so is empty is going to tell us if name is empty we can use that the name as a flag in our employee so in the display of employee i can say over here something like this uh, so i'm going to take that return out and i'm going to say if m name dot is empty why is it not showing is empty to me did i miss anything boolean is empty oh and it has to be constant i'm a bad boy did you did everybody realize just what happened did you just realize just what happened i tried to act, access a method of m name that wasn't constant it didn't allow me because i am in a constant function so it tells me if you call a non-constant member of name you might change it that's why because I forgot to make something that is constant it's not supposed to change the name I forgot to make it const so that's that was the reason for it so that's why it wasn't available and I'm gonna get in here set this one const to now I'm gonna have access to it now I'm gonna use the name as a flag in here saying if it is is empty not okay do all these print out otherwise uh, I'm gonna say uh, OSDR empty employee oh and this end L should not be here because now we are doing display uh, we have to fix lots of stuff in our program to make it nice and clear but anyways return OSDR um, obviously when you are actually displaying the employee inside the company you have to make sure that you put a new line after each display because display is supposed to display the employee not to go to new line anyway so that's set now so uh, now uh, we can use the name even for the company if the company name is empty then I can actually show that the company is empty and so on and so forth uh, are we all good with this now again this is not complete please try to complete it and make it work this it's an amazing practice if you do that um, if you have m m extra time of uh, with your workshops and stuff by all means do it and now let's uh, start uh, our lecture for today uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a very simple object uh, uh, with all the things that I want for the object. I'm going to just create it. And uh, uh, in this object, I am going to, um, um, I'm going to use it for our lecture today. The, the object uh, uh, is uh, a container. So I'm going to create a new object and I'm going to call it container. 
so that's a container because container is a general thing you can use it for anything you want so that's gonna be my class container and obviously I'm gonna need to add my uh, safeguards and end if and it should be a namespace stds because that's our uh, style and I'm gonna come over here and in here I'm gonna say namespace stds so hmm two minutes five minutes break even less than that I'm just gonna go get something to demonstrate and then we'll come back okay so two minutes I'm gonna go get some I just wanted to see usually I have lots of cups at my desk because I keep bringing tea over here and don't take it back today I cleaned it up so <laughs> I have to go get a couple of cups from downstairs and, and show you something okay so uh, bear with me I'll be back in two minutes okay resume resume uh, shall we continue all right so this is what I was talking about so we are creating a container a container could be this it's a container it could be this it's a container it could be this it's a container or it could be these these are all containers okay okay thirsty and this is a container too so a container has some volume of stuff in it so it has something in it there is something in here I need to know how much and for that I'm gonna put something in here so that's the container <clears throat> so I'm gonna create over here something for it and I'm gonna call it integer m volume so that's the amount of stuff that I have in it and it has a capacity that you can fit it in you cannot fill more than certain thing so I'm gonna put that one over here too so it's gonna be integer m capacity and we start right off this one so let's um, write uh, first first of all um, a, a constructor because I want to construct my container in a certain way obviously I don't need a destructor in here because everything's uh, uh, automatic and uh, because I want everything to be zero at the beginning it's a good practice to just initialize stuff that you have to zero um, always do that there is no harm in it it just reduces the bugs of this of your program a lot so uh, I'm gonna create a con uh, constructor for container and I'm gonna receive a, ca a capacity and that capacity let's say by default is 250 cc's and um, if I don't mention anything is 250 cc's <coughs> and if uh, and I can uh, have some a value initially in it but if I don't mention it, it's going to be an empty container so by creating this container uh, prototype this uh, con uh, constructor prototype could you please tell me how many constructors actually this class has currently <laughs> somebody wrote 250 I don't know why it came up with that I said how many constructors how many constructors and somebody said zero so this uh, so those people who said one and three they are they are correct okay those people who said one and three they are correct one because yeah it, essentially I'm creating one constructor of it there's one function one procedure one constructor that I'm creating I understand that but because I can call this constructor in three different ways it could be a no argument constructor because I have default values it could be a one argument constructor if I ignore this one and only uh, if I ignored this this one and only provide this one for it or it could be a two argument constructor if I 
put both of these things over here. Do we understand this? So the correct answer, like how many different ways I can create a container, that's three. And there is no way for someone who cannot see the class's implementation to tell you if it's only one constructor over here or it's really three because they can call it in three different ways from an outsider's point of view the constructor the the class container can be built in three different ways because of that it has three constructors do we are we under, do we is it understandable all right and the next thing I, I want to be able to do over here would be to uh, say add some uh, value to the thing. So um, I, have, I have a container over here and I want to be able to add some value to it. Okay, so that's what I want. I want to add something to a container. So that's what I want to do. Uh, so I'm going to say over here void add and I'm going to put integer some volume that I'm going to be adding to this thing. Uh, are we okay with this? All right, the next thing I want to do over here is uh, to be able to set something so so I want to say okay I want to uh, so not adding this one already had something in it but let's say this is an empty one and I want to set it to certain amount and put it over there if I want to put certain amount and put it over there I need to be to to be able to set the volume in here so again that's gonna be set integer volume uh, then I need to be able to add the value of one container to another and then see what happens to the other one. So, so for example, if this container is, has enough value and this container has some volume in it, if I add the value of the volume of the, of the contents of this one to, the, to this one, if I add to this one, okay, if this one was empty, it will have all the value of the other one and the other one goes empty so I need to create something like that to add the value of one container to another so this one is going to be another container container and I'm not going to make it a constant because unlike numbers like when you add a number to another number the original number remains the same but with containers when you take the contents of one container and put it in another you're actually uh, emptying the other one so this ad is kind of freaky it's not a regular thing I want to simulate a, a container and that's why I am doing this so that's gonna be container C are we okay with this all right so then I want to be able to see how much value volume how much is the volume of the uh, contents of this uh, so that's gonna be integer volume how much do I have in it and the next thing I want to have over here is to see what is the capacity of this thing. Capacity of this container, and that's that one. Um, I would like to be able to display the container, the contents of a container, so let's do that. So uh, I'm going to say std o stream reference display std o stream reference osdr Again, this uh, you do with your eyes closed. STD C out, and you know it's a constant because it doesn't uh, change the content. And in here, I'm going to say include IO stream, and now we have it. Okay, are we okay down to this point? Okay, what is wrong with my design? Think, oh, uh, Harshil, go ahead. Does volume and capacity are not constant, like uh, they both are query function? Yeah, you just ruined my question. I wanted to say, what is wrong with my design? And somebody would tell me, hey, volume and capacity are not changing the container. They should be constant. And you just ruined it for everyone. <laughs> 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 All right. So, yeah. So, volume and capacity are not supposed to change the container. So, they are supposed to be consts. But the rest are all good and dandy. Are we good with this, ladies and gents? 
So how I start programming? First of all, I'm gonna of all I'm gonna create all the empty uh, uh, procedures and methods in here, and then I'm gonna fit it in. So create that one, and create create this one, create this one. I'm lazy. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, creating the uh, the functions one by one uh, to the uh, code and then I'm gonna fill them in so that's that one and create display okay so those are my container stuff that I have and let me just uh, make the code I have to fix it so it generates the automatic code the way I want I installed the new Visual Studio and now all my settings and goodies that I had are out the window I have to redo it again I wish they could get the settings from the old one but I don't know why they don't. Anyway, so now I have everything. And as soon as you have this one created, it will actually do a return over here. And because it's O stream in here, I'm just going to say a return, return OSDR to do that. Okay, so now based on what I taught, what else I can do to make this a uh, blank design of mine better? Anyone? What change I can make to this one? And I said, when something like this happen, always do this because it creates cascades. You can, you can cascade the commands, the function calls. Anybody remembers? Was well, not just the like display function didn't you already do it yeah but this but yeah display function but display function is yeah that was one right but also i said when you are cr creating methods for a class if such and such is done it's better do it this way because you can cascade the functions when we were talking about construct so last session we talked about constructors destructors and what this this yes so as you see and apparently somebody's building a table at at peter's place so, <laughs> so uh, mute yourself peter <laughs> okay he's gone let me mute him sorry about that oh there we go okay <laughs> all right so so now, as you see, because these sets, and I told you, whenever you see a function is returning void, don't. Return the reference of the owner. That's better because it, it makes your code more flexible and gives you more options later on. And always, always do it that way and return this at the end. So simply say, return this. Okay? Return this unless you have to return something but if it's void and it's a method it's always better to uh, create a uh, return this and uh, it becomes handy are we okay down to this point okay see now th down to this point when you have something like this this should take you five minutes things over here are stuff that you should do it with your eyes closed again standards that you have to follow and do and now i have to set sit and actually think how every and each function should work for example when i'm creating a container when i'm at, uh, uh what should we call it um, setting uh, the uh the volume of a container and I have a capacity for it and so on and so forth how do I set it up so obviously uh, if I want to do it properly since Harshil didn't told us that the other one didn't have safe empty state I'm gonna create one over here so uh, I'm gonna have over here call something like uh, uh, call it uh, is valid so is valid it's gonna be a function that's gonna tell us if it's valid or not and as you see, because it's Boolean, then I have to uh, set it as Boolean. Uh, so I'm going to create the definition of that one too. And is valid sends it sends uh, 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 true if capacity 
is greater than zero. So if capacity, uh, m capacity, sorry, if m capacity is greater than zero, it is uh, uh, a valid container that I can use. Other than that, it's not a valid container. So now what I can do over here, I can set the, the capacity. So the, the, what I need to do, I have to say if uh, capacity is greater than zero and uh, um, volume is less than capacity, less than or equal to capacity, then I'm going to set everything. So M volume is set to volume and M capacity is set to capacity. Are we okay with this? All right. Now we want to set the volume. If I want to set the volume, what do I need to do? First thing I need to do, so when I'm setting the volume, it's as if you're pouring something into. So now you have your container and you're pouring something into your container. If you are doing something like this, the very first thing you need to do is to see if the container is valid or not. So you're going to say if is valid, do something. Otherwise, you don't do anything. No set, nothing. It's it's completely dead. And uh, um, to clear a container, so if, if 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 a container does if if a container is not valid and you want to clear it, it's exactly like fail that you do in C uh, C in and you clear it. You can simply create create a clear over here. Again, we don't return void. So I'm gonna say container clear. And what clear function does it it clears everything up. So if they want to they can actually reset the container to a valid state and we put the default value in capacity. So when, when you clear a container, you're essentially setting the M capacity to uh, uh, 250 and you're setting the volume to zero. And that clears everything up and makes like it's 250 cc capacity container. So if something goes wrong, users have a choice if it's invalid to, do, to fix it uh, so we gave them the tools. Now we're going to say, if my object is invalid, I'm not going to touch anything. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to let it stay. So uh, when I'm setting a thing, uh, I'm going to first check to see if it's valid or not. Then I'm going to say, if the, uh, the, vol if the volume that, that, that are adding over here is greater than or equal to zero, then I can actually start pouring the, the stuff into it. So what I will do, I'm going to set the, the volume. So I'm going to say M volume will be set to vol. Okay, so we're going to set it. After doing this, I'm going to check to see if they pour too much. If they pour too much, it's going to overflow. So I'm going to say if after setting the capacity over here that I have, uh, if uh, M capacity is less than M volume, then we have to set the M volume to be the capacity, which means it overflew and my uh, container is full. Are we okay with this? Perfect. Now, if I want to add something to it, what do I do? So if I want to add something to volume, what do I do? I have to make sure that if it overflows, it goes more. If it's negative, positive, that all this stuff I have to check. So I'm just going to reuse my code instead of doing all these things. So what I'm going to do over here, I'm going to say, when I'm actually adding volume to what I have, I'm going to set me, set my uh, uh, content to M volume plus VOL. That's adding to the capacity, right? And if it overflows, it's got to get fixed because set will do it. If it's if the object is not valid, it's not going to do anything. So I'm reusing my code. Everything is fine and dandy. That's going to add some uh, value to my uh, uh, something to the volume that I have. Are we OK with this? All right. Now let's uh, talk about uh, adding another container to what I have. If that's the case, the very first thing that I need to do 
is to see if C is valid. If C is valid, then I can actually pour the value out of it. Otherwise, I'm not going to do anything. Are we okay with this? Now, are we Thomas, Harshil, Fango? Are we okay with this? Thomas and Harshil? They quit. They're gone. All right. So, next thing I want to do over here, I have to actually double check and see what is, uh, do I have enough space for all the contents of that one? So, what is the empty space that I have in my, in my cup? How can I actually see what is the empty space? It's simply M capacity minus M volume. So, that's the amount of empty space that I have. Now, I'm going to say, if that value is greater than or equal to the volume of C, it means I have enough value. Otherwise, in here, otherwise in this case, it's going to uh, um, have leftover. It, it will have, it, will, it, it, has, it has leftover. So if this is the case, if this, this is the case, what I need to do is to first uh, uh, add the the value to this. So I'm going to say add uh, C the volume. Okay, so that's going to call that's going to call the other add and add the volume. So I'm all good and fine and dandy. And after doing this, because everything from here is added to mine, what I need to do is to make the uh, the other one empty because now it's empty there's nothing in there I emptied everything out of the other container are we okay with this all right Tom and okay. gay Thomas all right Thomas is slow today or he's gone anyways so that's that. Uh, but uh, if it's not, then what do I do? Then I need to know exactly how much is the leftover. So I have to say set the other one. I have to say set the C to the volume of that I have inside C minus uh, M capacity M capacity minus M volume So what happens over here is this. It's oh, that's minus. So it's going to say this is the amount of empty space that I have, and that's the amount that is reduced. That C is reduced by. So I'm going to reduce it by that one using set. And then after this, I know that my volume is full. And here's add. So that add was a little complicated, but it's all done. So essentially. If it has enough space, you pour everything in here, and this one becomes empty. That's the first part of if statement. The second part of if statement is that when you put half of it, and it gets full, so this one has some left over in it. Are we okay with this? All right. So... Volume, what does it do? It returns the volume. Capacity, what does it do? It returns the capacity. I don't need to worry about it. And what does display do? Uh, display essentially displays the, the contents of the, uh, uh, the, the contents of the container. So it's going to print a CN. Then... Uh, 
I need uh, IO stream over here. And using namespace std. All right. So, all right. So what happens over here is this, it's gonna uh, type CN for container, then in eight spaces it's gonna write justify and show the volume, then put a slash, and then uh, in, in another eight, right, justify shows the capacity, and then closes it and goes out. So essentially display is displaying uh, the, the contents of the, uh, of the container. So uh, what I can do to just to test this and see how it works, um, uh, I'm gonna do this. One thing actually is important to do is here say if is valid do this. Other than that I'm gonna say why oh did I I forgot to make this constant again. Something's wrong with me, people. Seriously, I shouldn't have passed OP244. <laughs> so const over here, that's is valid. And it's const. Clear is not. Good. So we are coming over here. So if it is valid, do it like this. Else, I'm going to say OSDR bad container. Okay? And that's that. So now I can actually write a test program for this. And the test program. This is for the employee. Well, SD. Oh, this is for this is for the um, STR copy. Forget about that. We don't care about this. Uh, I'm just gonna write it like this. Copy. And do this. And in here, I want include container. So. So I'm creating a container. Let's uh, let's make the first one empty. So so let's do it like this. That's 200 2, 2 cc capacity. And then this one is like that. And A is whoa. What am I doing in here? My apologies. So this is C dot display. And in here I'm gonna say C out. And I'm gonna put. Uh, C. Well, I'm going to put C in here. And like that. And go to And D dot display. C out D. And A dot display. I'm going to A dot display. C out A. And show it like this. I think we are good now. Now, if I run the program, this is what's going to happen. It's going to actually run it, and hopefully, it's going to give us error. What is the error over here? Clear must return a value. I forgot to return this. Where is my clear? I'll return, uh, run again. And there you go. So I have A over the C as 0 uh, into 220. Uh, D is. Uh, a container that has 200 uh, in 300 and a for some reason it's it is making it 250 oh because the default constructor sets it to 250 it, therefore it, it remains 250 by default uh, are we okay with this we could also do something else over here and i can of course i can do add and stuff and all the good stuff that i have so so let's make this one uh, uh so in here i'm gonna say i'm gonna say c dot set i'm gonna put uh, 100 cc's in here then i'm gonna say um uh, d dot add and in here i'm gonna put 50 to add to it and then i'm gonna say uh, what do i say i'm gonna say um for a i don't have anything for now so i'm just gonna do it like this and i'm gonna uh, use the d and, and i show it to you so copy like that um and so it, it it just adds it and so you see 
but now uh, I have 100 over here and 250 so that's 50 added to it and the, the other one remains the same uh, um, and I can uh, um, do all the things that I've done so um, so in here I have uh, two, after this I have 200 50 over here so what I can do over here is to say C dot add D and and then see what happens afterwards to test all the things that we have done so now when you look at it let me bring CPP over here um, so we can actually see the outcome there you go so uh, 200 fit so that's uh, that's 250 uh, in D and then I have 100 in C so when I pour everything uh, everything when I pour from D into C because D has 250 it cannot fill the whole thing so what happens is that it only fills uh, 120 over there therefore 130 will remain in D um, and uh, everything's working properly and it's done are we okay with this We can also write another type of function over here. We can write a helper function over here. And with this helper function of ours, we can actually have two containers, okay, mixed into a bigger container. So whenever I want to have two containers and have it in one, I can actually have a container called sum that receives two containers. So uh, it's a container. Uh, left and a container uh, right uh, so that's the left container and right container and then I ha and I and the return of this one will be a container too so what I will do con container so what this sum will do over here will add up two containers and make a new one for me so so in here uh, what container does I'm gonna create a container actually uh, um, out of this one so I'm gonna say container uh, say uh, the, re the the result uh, or yeah result would be left container dot capacity plus right container dot capacity and the volume of it uh, would be and the volume of it would would be um, actually uh, yeah and the volume of it would be um, left dot volume plus right dot volume okay so let's see uh, if we are good and put something like this and then return that result out return Whereas, so now I can actually sum up the two containers into one. Now in here, what I can do is to say, okay, I'm going to say A will be set to uh, sum of uh, C, and, C and D. And obviously, because adding, I'm adding the two together, uh, after doing that, they are both going to be empty, so left will be set to zero and the right will be set to zero too because they're both empty now after doing that so so now if I run the program um, after this well obviously a will change and will be a bigger container with uh, 520 cc's capacity which has 350 total that is some of the other two are we okay with this okay now that we have talked about this let's go through uh, some introduction to understand what operators are and how they work and what what are the buzzwords about operators how do we how do we categorize operators and and see what they are so let's talk about that so I'm going to create a, a text file and I'm going to call that operator.txt now in this operator.txt we're going to talk about operators so when you are dealing with operators that we have in C++ language um, and 
arithmetic operations that we do in is similar to those of, of arithmetic operations basic arithmetic operations we write like for example something like a plus b or, or you write something like um, what should we call it c plus equal d or you write uh, a plus equal 2 2 or you write c out hello these type of operators that you are writing we call them binary operators so we call them binary because they have two operands so the general binary operators are left operand operand and then there is an operator and there is la right operand okay so we, we refer to these things as binary operators are we okay with this and also we could have something like I is equal to 3 that's a binary operator too these are all binary operators um, now binary operators can be in two different things two different ways uh, one the ones that have no side effect which means when you write a plus over here this a and b will not change so this one has no side effect okay this one will actually change the content of C afterwards so if C is 10 and these two C becomes 12 afterwards so this operator has side effect do we understand that okay now saying that I equals 2 I equals 3 is the assignment operator does it have side effect yes it does have side effect because it changes the left operand okay so now we know these are all binary operators and please appreciate that that in C++ every C and C++ every single operator returns a value so you can actually say over here foo a a plus B you can pass that value to something else or I can say over here display C out hello I can do that so we know that every single operator can return something are we okay with this all right so the other type of operators that we have these operators are called unary operators unary operators unary operators they have one operand and one operator and it's they are always in form of operator and then operand afterwards okay like plus min like minus minus two plus b uh, not a so these type of operators are binary operators and exactly like the other ones they could have side effect and not side effect for example if I do over here plus plus a plus plus actually has side effect so this one has side effect where the top ones over here where the top ones over here they have absolutely no side effect whatsoever they're just uh, looking at the values and and like the other one you can pass them to functions if you want to you can say minus you can actually uh, they, they return values so all these things actually um, return values exactly like uh, regular operators are we okay with this Harshil we do have an operator like uh, a plus plus so the, at that the that's the last one so the right. unary operator the ones that we talked about over here we call these ones prefix operate unary operators the postfix operators are especially and only for C++ they don't work for math we don't have that one for those the postfix operators there are only two of them and we have no other ones a like X Z plus plus or a minus minus these are unary operators 
and the rest of the story is the same they return values you can see say foo uh, z plus plus everything works the same way they return values everything is the same the only difference is that these are postfix unary operators are we okay with this all right so now we know that we know what operators are and how they deal and work with well, work let's take a look at what we have over here first thing I'm gonna I'm gonna save the, the thing that I created over here so I'm gonna say alt F A over here and I'm gonna say I'm gonna call it what what am I gonna call this one I'm gonna call this uh, a uh, functional functional container dot H save it and this one is going to be a functional container cpp okay so now i'm going to close these and open up my containers and we are going to talk so and in here i'm going to say a functional main.cpp okay now let's come back over here and open up the original ones All right, so when, uh, let me split. Now, take a look at this. When you are saying set 100, doesn't it look like C is set to 100? When I say add 50 to D, doesn't it look like D, D, plus equal 50 when in here I'm saying C add D doesn't it look like C plus equal D and if I say over here A is sum of C and D it really craves to write A is C plus D do we understand this So now that I have, I, uh, Thomas, are you with me? This is an important moment. If you're not here, then later on we'll be in trouble. Thomas, are you here? Thomas? No? I think he's gone. He's gone. I got reached him. <laughs> oh, God, boy, he is. Anyways, because <laughs> this is the most important moment. Okay, so do I have everybody's attention? Okay, all I am going to do, people, is series of, all I'm going to do is series of renaming and nothing else. Please take a look. I'm going to come in container. This set function, I'm going to set it to operator equal. The add function, I'm going to set it to operator plus equal. This add function, I'm going to set it to operator plus equal. And this sum function, I'm going to set it to operator plus. I didn't do anything but renaming the functions. Do we understand this? So that's exactly what I'm going to do over here. So this set over here will be operator plus equal. Oh, oh, sorry, uh, operator equal. Then the add over here will be operator plus equal. Obviously, this set cannot be called like this, so I'm going to say operator equal. I'm just calling the same function. I am just renaming. Nothing extraordinary is happening over here. So this one is going to be operator plus equal. I have a set over here, so I'm saying C dot set. So this is going to be operator equal this is c dot set that's operator equal this is add that's going to be operator plus equal all i'm doing is renaming and that's that and i have a couple of sets over here so that's going to be operator equal and it's going to be operator equal okay now I'm going to come back to my main 
and in my main I'm going to do the exact same thing so this is going to be operator equal this is going to be operator plus equal this is going to be operator plus equal and this is going to be operator plus okay I don't think I changed the name of the operator plus at the end did I know <laughs> operator plus okay so that's that so as you see I didn't do anything but renaming the functions now if I run the program the outcome is identical to what I had before because I did nothing but changing the names do we understand this okay Lin Lin do we understand this we are we are keep having casualties first it was Thomas now Lyndon is gone now she's reconnecting the audio all right all right so all right we are not here we are not here I can't do anything about it so now that it's renamed the magic of C language is that C++ is that when you name a function using an operator you now have two ways of calling it you can call it like a function that it is or you can tell to the thing hey call it like an operator call it like an operator call it like an operator and call it like an operator so instead of calling the functions I am using the operator version of it but the end result is the same when I compile and run it it doesn't make any difference for the compiler the compiler runs comes over here goes one by one through all the things that it's supposed to have let me just bring it at the corner over here and have this thing guy over here there you go so now when it comes over here one by one when it reaches to operator equal it says okay at equal is what f for for integers and doubles and primitive values I have never used equal for a container and an integer let me see if container has a member operator called equal does it have it no yes it does it, it executes that one for you there you go and it runs it okay and then he, then it says plus equal plus equal is for integers and doubles and and short integers and floats I don't I've never seen one for a container and an integer so does container have a member operator called plus equal and it looks for it yes it does so it actually calls that one and the same thing with the other one well and the same thing with the other one when it actually runs right there to that point it actually sees there is a container at left and a container at right so it actually goes to that one and calls the function and finally when it comes to this part it says C plus D I have never had plus between a C and a D does C have a member operator plus it goes in here no there is no member operator plus now let me see if there is a helper operator a standalone operator that has a left one as a container and a right one as a container it does yes so I'm gonna call that one instead and therefore that is gonna get called and that ladies and gentlemen is called helper non-member operator overloads are we okay with this hangi so I have a question Go so on. we can use the operator only when we uh, calculate the numbers type no, of numbers no no okay. not at all if I'm crazy enough I can I can 
I can do if I like I can come over here. I can come over here and do this. I can do this. Obviously, it's going to go bananas because nothing's going to work properly now, but it's going to keep saying hello whenever you are setting it. You understand this? Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, but but a sane programmer, a good programmer overloads operators. Hengi, what is the meaning of overloading? Do you remember? Can you so, tell me? Uh, we have the same name of the identifier, but we have different agreement, uh, agreement of the function. Fantastic. An operator overload implements which aspect of object orientation? Do you remember that? Um, polymorphism, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember what polymorphism was? So it's overloading. Over, over <laughs> I know, but <laughs> but, uh, but was it what is overload? It's polymorphism. What is polymorphism over? No, but what what is it? Polymorphism is essentially means doing the same thing in a different way, correct? Yes. So when you are doing plus equal. A sane programmer will do a plus equal, but in a different way. You follow that? So in a container, when I'm doing a plus, if, you, if it was a regular plus equal in an integer, so if I had something like this, if I had, if I had integer a as 10 and integer b as 20, and if I say b plus equal a, obviously b becomes 30, and A becomes 10, correct? Yes. But when you are doing a container plus equal, it means you are pouring one to another. Therefore, the value of the other one becomes zero, correct? Mm, I don't think it's zero. See? I have a container. It has some water in it, correct? Yes. I do plus equal, so I'm going to say this plus equal. I'm going to say plus equal... It plus equals to this one, and this one becomes empty, correct? Yes. So the plus equal for a container should not, it still does do plus equal. It still adds to the volume, but unlike regular plus equal will affect the other one because that's my business logic. You follow that? Therefore, I'm doing the same thing in a different way. Oh, I got it. You got it? Okay, yeah. so, and to the, to, 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 kind of broaden what Henge said over here, I want to emphasize the fact that uh, it's operator overload. You cannot invent new operators. I cannot say I'm going to write operator, I can, I'm going to write operator at sign. At sign is not an operator in C++ language, so it's not going to do anything. You cannot, you're not allowed to do that. To overload an operator, the operator must exist and work that way. Are we okay with this? And I want to volunteer to, to do something. Somebody uh, who can answer my questions so other people, so we, so we can teach, teach through it. Anyone? Anyone? No one? I'll do it. Okay, <laughs> Peter, thank you. Okay, <laughs> Peter, Peter, good, 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 All good, right. good. All right, okay. so um, I'll make it up to you. Okay, so so <laughs> let's, now let's, here I am trying to display C, correct? Yes. Okay, so wouldn't it have been nice if I, instead of this gibberish thing that I have written, I would write C out, C column, and then print C and go to new line? Yeah. That's how we do it in C++, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to answer these questions. When C out C is called after it's called, what does it return? Um, the C? It returns, it returns C out itself. That's why the oh. next one gets printed, right? It returns right. the C out, correct? Right, the cascading so, thing. Exactly, the cascading thing. Now, I have an operator over here. That's operator, insertion operator, correct? Yes. So let's put this one over here. So I'm going to write over, I'm going to write the insertion operator over here. So this is the insertion operator, operator insertion, correct? 
Yes. What is the what is at the left side of this? What is the type of C out? For sorry, are you looking at operator right now? Or are you what is the type of C out? Oh, uh, the O stream. It's O stream. Perfect. So the left operator of mine is an O stream reference, correct? Yes. What is the right side of this operator? Uh, what is the type of C? Uh, C container. is a container, yes. Yeah. So the right side should be a container reference. Now, when I'm printing that container, sh will, should C change? No. No. Perfect. So container. So first of all, it's a reference. It should not change, it so it's costs. constant. And I'm going to call it right so I remember. Now, to be able to have the next one that is new line to get printed, what this operator should return? C out. C out, which is an O stream reference. So that's exactly what we're going to do it. Voila. We have the universal way of overloading operator, insertion operator for C out. Now, if I actually start implementing this, all I need to do in here so i have a right that i want to print correct yes so if you want to print right that is a container how do you print it with oh pardon sorry with uh, display we... correct yes so what does display accept as a parameter uh, o, o stream correct o stream. we designed it so i'm gonna pass the left operand to it and it's going to return the O stream because we designed it that way. So I'm just going to say return. Ladies and gentlemen, this function you should write with your eyes closed. Every single time for any class you want to print with C out like other stuff. When I write this function, because I just overloaded what I call this one as a helper function, this helper function at left side receives O stream, at right side receives container. So now, instead of printing all these gibberish like that, I can actually print it like a normal human being over here. So instead of doing all that, I can actually do the printout like this. Oh, oh, sorry, my apologies. Copy, I wanted to, and paste. So this is how I'm going to print it. Exactly like regular expressions, uh, like normal expressions that I do in C++. And that's it. So uh, let's put a space, a column and a space. Or I'm going to say C comma. Not something like that, and A comma. And copy I'm gonna remove that operator operator that we actually let it be maybe so remember whenever in trouble you can always use the function call for it you don't need to actually use the operator if you have like like when you when I'm when I'm in the function over here I, when I'm in the class over here I want to call the operator equal so although instead of saying this I could have I could have said this. I could say this equals to equals to m volume plus vol. But why do I go through that trouble? I can simply use the function call for it. So remember, you can although you can use the operator call, but remember these are all functions. And now if you look at this you will see that now C out works for the container like a regular thing. And as it as it gets executed, when it reaches to the function call, obviously it, after it runs at left side, it's going to be O stream. At right side, it's going to be container. Therefore, it goes to the function that is designed for that. So we use that function as a shield to behind the scene 
call the display with design and that's going to display it so I don't have to do it over and over and over Vin go ahead Vin? Uh, so, yeah. sorry can you hear me yes I can okay perfect so I have two questions go ahead uh, for the uh, pedophile online 87 do we have to specify the type of left yes of course the type of left is all stream reference. Oh, that's okay. Oh, okay, I see. And then the next question will be, um, so in order to, like, cause uh, C equal 100 instead of C uh, dot operator equal mm -hmm. 100, um, for the name of the member function, do we have to, like, specifically name it operator equal? Yes, or that's, that's, can... that's how you overload it. That's how it's okay, done. Okay, I see. How I did it, is how it's done i see okay okay so again continuing to what you're saying if for example i want to read the container from input like for example i want people to enter like like let's say i want people to enter the input for me as uh uh, uh volume slash capacity so i can read it from the entry if i want to do that then the overload for C in is exactly the same. First, you have to create the read for it. So the read works exactly the same way. So it's going to be iStream. And then you're going to have read. And then iStream, ISTR, standard C in is going to be there. And obviously, it's not constant because it's going to change it. So that's what's going to happen. And then you simply uh, create the definition for this. You don't even need to create the definition. I'm not going to write anything, but the overload for it, I'm going to write it in two seconds, but the overload for it is identical to the other one, which means exactly as you did for insertion operator, you can do extraction operator, which extracts it from iStream, as you see, and that's left, and the right one is a container that is not constant. And the function call for it would essentially be the exact same way, right? This like display. So in here, you simply say return the right containers read passing left to it, and you're done. And now it can be actually it can be actually read with C in. All I need to do is to implement uh, the read over here. So how do I do that? It's very simple. I simp uh, I'm gonna say uh, I'm gonna say uh, C in into uh, M uh, volume. Then I'm going to say C in dot ignore. Then I'm going to say C in M capacity. And oh, not C in, I'm sorry, ISTR. So it reads one integer, ignores, reads another integer, and returns iStream at the end. Voila. So now if I want to read it, my read is going to work that way. So in here, I can actually say, uh, see out, enter container, container, and I'm going to write it and I'm going to write it for example for it. So they know I'm going to say volume slash capacity. Okay. So it's going to be like that and a column. Now in here, I can actually say C in A. All right. Obviously, the best way for doing it was to, uh, I'm just going to do it like this, then I write, write the proper one. Now, if I do C in over here, when the program runs, it comes to C in, but when it comes to C in, it actually goes to the operator overload, goes to the read, and reads these va values. I'm going to do uh, Shift F11 to execute and get out. So in here, I'm going to say 100 slash 200. It reads the first one, ignores the 200, and so so the capacity will so and then get out of here. And when we come out, now you will see that that one is 100 out of 200. Obviously, if I'm writing this, the best way to write it is to actually have two. Uh, temporary values and then set it make sure it actually works 
uh, uh, validate it and doing all, all the things that are supposed to. So do a validation on it and set the I stream to failure if it's not valid. Um, uh, because we have only two minutes to the uh, to to start up your quiz, I'm not going to do this. But remember, this was just the introduction to it. So I I took you through the ballpark of the whole thing. The next day you are coming in, we're going to do operator overload up and down and complete this container thingy and uh, uh, apply it to the employee and capacity and and company and stuff if we want to. Uh, any questions down to this point? Again, this was only this was only an introduction. Okay, remember that. Vin, go ahead. Vin, uh, that was a misclick. But I also have one question. Uh, when is the overview for uh, workshop four? I don't think I'm gonna do it. The last time three people showed up. Oh, okay, okay. So the last time only three people showed up. How, anyone wants to set an overview like? Tomorrow, maybe? Wow, okay. So I'll set an overview tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'll set up an overview tomorrow uh, during my office hours. So right after the first session, I'm going to do an overview. I'm going to post it so we know. All right. Uh, so tomorrow during office hours, uh, I'll see how many people are going to show up. Anyways, have yourself. And after the break, there are not going to be any overviews because I'm not there. So my apologies on that. All right. Uh, um, any questions? The quiz started. Please start. Thank you. I'm going to mute and I'm going to log off at 6 o'clock. If you have any questions, go ahead. Uh, Thanks, Professor. All right, Lim, go ahead. You had a question, Sethbiel? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that, that was my mistake. Okay, yeah. No problem. Sorry. Okay, start the quiz, yeah. please.